I'm Cam Weiland, and um, today we're going to be doing something a little different. I'm privileged to be interviewing Joanna Pinn of thecreativepin.com, which was also one of the top ten blogs for writers this year. And um, Joanna is also the author of the new thriller, Pentecost. Welcome, Joanna. Thanks for having me, Katie. And um, so I'm sure my viewers would be interested in hearing the story behind the story. Um, what was your inspiration for Pentecost? Right, well, when I wanted to write um, fiction, I really had to think about what I love and what I get enthusiastic about because you, you know yourself how hard it is to write a novel and if you're not inspired by the material, you're going to pretty much give up. So I, um, although I'd spent a long time thinking I, I wanted to write literary fiction, I realised that actually that's not my first love. I, I'm a total addict of thrillers, action movies, you know, fast-paced kind of kick-ass heroines and, you know, all, all of these things that make for an adventure and a thriller. So that was one thing. And then I also looked at what else I, I love. And I have a, a master's degree in theology, so I love religion. And um, I've also studied psychology. So I wanted those things to be part of it. And also travel. I'm a total travel addict. So I wanted to combine all of those things and make, a, you know, a sort of adventure thriller that roams around the world. Um, I call it a combination of, of sort of Dan Brown with Lara Croft or, you know, with a sort of adventure with, with, with uh, religious themes. So th I guess that's, that's really what inspired it was my own love for these topics. And also I wanted it to be a series where I can investigate further <laughs> some of the world's sort of great spiritual mysteries and write about it from that perspective. So um, how long did it take you to write? What was kind of your journey for this novel? Well, it being the first novel, you know, I think it took longer because I spent a lot of time learning at the same time as writing. So I actually started it in NaNoWriMo uh, National Novel Writers Month in 2009 and wrote the first 20,000 words. So I didn't, uh, you know, win NaNoWriMo, but I felt, <laughs> <laughs> I felt that I got the first bit of, of you know, a nugget. And, um, and then I went to, to Venice and Rome over that Christmas and I, and I came up with some ideas there um, about Pentecost and that type of thing. So I really started then and I finished just before New Year uh, 2011. So it was just over a, over a year it, it took me. And I, I really think that what took longer was, well, first of all, the first draft did take about six months, but then the editing was the next six months. And yeah. <laughs> I really learned that editing in the second draft, the third draft, the third draft was almost completely different to the first draft. You know, I'm one of those people. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those people who at the moment has to write multiple drafts. I know some authors don't, but I'm there. So, um, so yeah, I think a year, so just over a year, which is fine, I think. I mean, it's quite respectable. It's not exactly oh, fast, yes. but, you know, it's getting, and it's not that long. As I said, it's fast-paced thriller. It's only just, it's James Patterson length. That's what I tell people. <laughs> Oh, congratulations. I didn't realize it was your first novel, so that's um, a huge um, accomplishment. Oh, thank you. Um, you've been very successfully blogging and networking for quite some time now. So how did um, all of that for your author a platform help with Pentecost? Right, well, you know, as you said, it is my first novel, but it's my fourth book. So I've written three nonfiction before. So part of having my, my blog and website was about those books. But um, yeah, dabbling now in, in fiction and loving it. Um, but having the blog, I actually started writing the blog um, to market my first book. But then as I got into it, as you have, you discover that blogging is itself a really rewarding thing to do. So um, I've pretty much built the blog up over the last couple of years. And um, it's been really helpful in a number of ways. Ways. One, I've blogged my journey of the first novel, so people have been hearing about Pentecost for a whole year, <laughs> <laughs> which means that some of my audience are ready to buy the book, which is obviously one of the reasons we do this. Um, but secondly, I also blogged some of the, the important aspects. So the book cover, when I was um, doing the book cover, because I'm an in independent publisher at the moment, um, I had a designer do several different versions of the book cover and I put them on my blog and then I did a survey with SurveyMonkey to see which one people like best. And I had, what, nearly five, you know, nearly 600 um, votes and all of these, com like 150 comments or something on what people liked and didn't like. And the resulting cover is an amalgamation of what they said and it wasn't at all what I thought I wanted. I love it now. <laughs> But I, I went with what the majority wanted and not what I had originally wanted. So that massively helped me create a yeah. really nice book cover. 
Um, and the same thing I, I did with the back blurb. You, I mean, you understand how hard the back blurb is to write. Yes. Yeah, really hard. And so I wrote an article about that and then had people critique that as well. So you can use your blog for marketing, but also for help with the actual content. So uh, that's been really good. And, and also now with launching the book, you know, it's clearly a platform that I have readers on. So for anyone starting blogging, you've just got to wait a bit of time. You know, it takes time to grow, <laughs> doesn't it? Yes, well, um, your book cover is fabulous. I loved it. Um, actually, I think I was probably one of the people who voted on it. <laughs> um, and I'm sure that the fact that you've had readers so involved in your process up to now has been um, really helpful in building interest um, in your reader base. Um, so what do you consider your greatest challenge in writing this book, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, well... I think one of the, the things was moving from non-fiction to fiction because there's this there was a big block in my head that said I I I'm not a fiction writer and so you know all the things you talk about with you know beating writer's block and things that's when I had to look around me for the things that inspired me and then I really felt I had to learn about fiction writing so I did a lot of programs and read a lot of books on um, you know characters on plot on setting you know changing my writing style to a fiction writing style which was brilliant and I loved it and you know again as a blogger it gives us a lot to write about when we when we learn because every time I learned something I would blog about it <laughs> yeah. so um, that was really good so I think trying to learn at the same time as writing became something that you know I was focused on so I was trying to balance my time and also blogging the day I have a day job I work four days a week so you know it's kind of trying to balance everything that was hard um, that was the first thing the next thing was definitely in writing the hardest thing I found was dialogue I really I'm still <laughs> learning more and more about dialogue because I found that my writing is quite business-like um, I'm quite a uh, terse succinct writer um, I'm the kind of person who has to add words after editing. <laughs> it would be a short story otherwise. <laughs> um, so dialogue I'm still getting into and um, really edited that a lot to try and make it better and had a lot of feedback on that. Um, yeah, so they were probably the, the, the biggest things that I, I found difficult about the process. But I, I should say I loved it so much that I'm already plotting the next one. So even though it was hard, I think next time I'll be able to write faster and uh, get it done quicker. Oh, I, I was also going to say, editing it, I realised that I had to have a professional editor. Um, and even though I'm an indie author, you know, I absolutely think people need that other pair of eyes because you just can't see your mistakes, you know, you, you, you just can't see them. So it was very valuable to me. I actually had two editors in the end and I had seven proofreaders and all of that feedback really helped. So, you know, you'd probably agree with that, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I think that um, authors who absolutely need that, um, whether it's your beta readers, your crit partners or editors or whatever, that objectivity is really, really invaluable. Mm. Um, so after the excitement of the new book release, what's next for you? Well, um, as I said, I'm, gonna, I'm starting to plot the next um, book out. The next book's going to be called Prophecy, and it's going to feature the, the same uh, core characters and the same sort of spiritual agency. And so I'll be looking at that. So it's definitely going to feature Jerusalem more heavily, because I love Jerusalem. It's one of my sort of key places in the world. And I've got, uh, definitely got a scene in the Paris catacombs. So if people are into, you know, the scene writing, that's what I, I love. So, yeah, Prophecy is happening. I'm also, you know, spending a lot of energy launching Pentecost and I know you, you, you do the same in the promotion so I'll be reporting back on that um, to see if you know I can advise other people on what works and what doesn't work um, yeah that, that's probably the main thing I'll be starting on writing prophecy I'm really looking forward to getting back to the writing again I feel like I've had a couple of months of writing <laughs> guest articles, you, you know how it works, and um, mm -hmm. now I really want to start that, you know, the composting process of getting ideas yes. together, the really fun bit about fiction writing, I think, is this idea gathering and making stuff up, so yes. yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Well, how can people find you and your book online if they're wanting to find you? Right, well, my uh, main website is thecreativepen.com and pen with a double N. And uh, you can find Pentecost uh, mainly on Amazon.com and .uk. It's there on Kindle and print book. Um, or if you go to pentecostnovel.com, that will take you to all the links. So also Barnes & Noble all over the place. So, yeah, thank you. Okay.
Well, thank you very much for stopping by Wordplay today, Joanna. Um, it's been a ton of fun talking with you, and I wish you all the best with your book. Thanks so much, Katie, for having me today.